Buffer underscore subroutine is now live. Streaming just chatting, learning, Black History Month. How are you doing today? Hello to you too, Indiana. Welcome. I hope Lior be glad you don't live in the shithole I live in. Fantastic. <gasps> Lior, thank you! Lior0111 just resubscribed for oh four months. Oh my gosh. Months. Thank Perish you. Wait, ads. four months? Holy shit, thank you! Oh my goodness. You're the best. Thank you so much, Lior. I appreciate that. My neighbor that. is blaring Northern Irish pro-unionist music. I see. Like, blaring. Ah. Well. A. Interesting. Hi, Scarlet! Hello, everyone. I'm gonna wait, like, uh, like two more minutes, because I want... I'm also glad I don't live in a high buffer. Hi, Scarlet! So, if you defects are okay with it, I want to wait just a couple minutes, because I want as many people to be in here as possible when we start. Because it's going to start with some crucial information. So, you know, I just, I want as many people to be there for the start, because... <clears throat> so. The funniest part? Fucker isn't even Irish. <laughs> what? <laughs> now that's weird. That, that, that's, that's one hell of a plot twist, Indiana. Ooh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to turn on streamer mode. Because right now you can hear the things. Yeah. So, I'm looking forward to this stream. Not because it'll be perfect or anything, but because I hope it goes well and I want to do a good I was job not here. joking when I called North Central Indiana a Gmod Darkrup server. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. God damn. God damn. You know what I should do? Well, we got a few more minutes. Let's post this to Twitter as well. I should, you know, let the people who check Twitter uh know that we're doing this. It'd be kind of cool, huh? Kind of pog. Kind of smart, even. I'm so smart. I'm really good at being smart, Defects. Didn't you know? I'm the smartest. Anyways, post. There we go. Let's see. 704. One minute till it's 705, and then we're going to start. And I. You know what? I was going to, like, put on, like,. Defects, you want, you want like, very, very, very quiet background music? Just, like, super, super quiet. Just so there's not, there's a non-zero amount of, uh, background noise. I doubt it matters. Like, you're gonna hear me talking this whole time.
at 705. We're gonna start. <clears throat> so, defects, I'd like to pre uh, preface this with something. I am white. I grew up in a smaller town in Massachusetts. I've had a family from the far right, and let's just say they have some well they're kind of racist i don't feel the way they do about things but it's important to acknowledge and accept that fact like that i grew up with that sort of influence. i had a they're... family from the far right my most sincere condolences oh well thank you indiana yeah um for reference uh my mom was just talking to me uh the other day about chemtrails so they've gotten worse somehow. Uh, anyways, that's besides the point. So I want to preface this with a lot of the stuff I know, right? A lot of the stuff of the, the experiences I've had, the things I've learned. Fucking one minute ad break. Oh, god damn it. Is there an ad break right now? Fuck. All right. This information is important, but also just where we're about to go is important. So I guess we'll we'll let the one minute ad break finish. You know what I just the ad break realized? Tilda. In the bedroom, the fucking defect corral image isn't around it. I've never noticed till today. I've never noticed that till like right now. Why is the defect corral gone in this in this scene? I don't understand it. Whatever. We look forward to the return of the defects. <clears throat> Do, 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 do. How's everyone's night in the meantime? Y'all doing good? It be finished. It's finished? Wonderful. Because um, the important one of the important points I wanted to make, because I... This is something important to embrace defects. This, the topic of racism and stuff, isn't supposed to be comfortable. It's just fundamentally not. You're it. It is Doing not pretty good. Though keeping oh. an eye on the Nyasanji slash Selene stuff. Honestly, fair. That is fair. They are so like. That's okay. It is okay to be uncomfortable during some of this. Just understand it and learn from it. Cause, for reference, I remember when I was younger, probably like middle school time, something like that. I remember being so truly confused on why we even have Black History Month. Because I was like, oh, that stuff happened a long time ago. We haven't done that since the Civil War and shit like that. What, who, who cares at this point? Because Little Buffer didn't understand that none of that is gone. It's in a somewhat different packaging, a little bit of a wrapper, but all these problems still persist today. Not a lot's changed, defects. Maybe they're good at giving an illusion, but it's nothing more. And I remember <clears throat> distinctively thinking the inverse when I was about that age. Like, if there's a Black History Month, why isn't there a White History Month? Because my little brain didn't understand something. Many things. The Such more as... things change, the more they stay the same. Exactly, Indiana. Fucking exactly, to a T. Um, so, we fucking, we're, we're past middle school thought process now. I'd, I'd hope. I'd certainly hope, at least. I guess we'll find out. You know, maybe freshman year of high school, I, I had a little bit of that still. 
because I know I know high school is where that that shit really cleaned up. So I. Anyways, the important part here is that this stuff's important, and I thank you all very much. I'm gonna for have to here. eat dinner. I'll be back in a few. No! Exclamation mark, clerk. Ah, <sighs> all right, Indiana. Come watch, watch, watch stuff. Come back and watch the VOD after. You're going to need to see sound important. Because defects, we're about to explore something important here. This is going to be the real kicker we're going to start with. Before we get into the history of things, before we get into a lot of that, I need to show you, I need to show you some proof right now of modern day racism happening all the time, live. And I can tell you really live because want to know why? I don't know what we're about to see. I'm about to put us into- ignore the fact that I can't be seen. We're about to go onto a page on- We expect an essay from you, Indiana. Show us you know enough about this to leave us right now. <laughs> um, we- I googled this before to make- or not googled, twittered this to, before to make sure that it contains info that might be needed for this example, and it does. If you go on to Twitter and you search White History Month, you just see atrocious things. Not all of you, because some of them are haha <laughs> funny memes. the fuck about white history month it's already come on damn it where is it like like this right here just just pro nazi shit never forget what the nazis did they ended the jewish created child trafficking in germany shut down the jewish gay brothels shut down the jewish born shut down the jew like oh my god first off Oh, this one I remember seeing before. Oh shit, wait, I just realized I'm zoomed in too far. Y'all can't read a lot of this text. Like, we- this is modern. People have- this was posted 5.59pm February 1st. It is literally, like, this- This isn't- this isn't okay. These are modern things being posted. And now we've got a post showing up with it related to, hey, fuck off. I remember seeing this tag and I clicked on it the first moment it was trending, because it was for a bit. And it was just vile. It was just disgusting and fucking vile. Let me scroll down a little bit so we can catch up to the point it was at. Let me see if I can find the fucking shit. A lot of it was fucked up shit like, oh, we made things better because you have technology thanks to us. You because it makes me want to fucking throw up. Oh, shit like this. Shit like this defects. None of this is okay. And this is... This stuff's being posted modern. And this is just like the tiny fraction of it, right? These are the things that some fucko decides, hey, we're going to post this publicly. This is not... Uh, fucking... Look at this shit. Who is this motherfucker? Oh, there's trucks again. Free soul chest. Was it? The fucking like, look at this individual. Look how fucking sad this person is. So this is the point I'm trying to make. Defects is this stuff isn't a game. This stuff isn't just a case of like, oh man, well history is cool and all, but it's, it doesn't really matter. 
this matters now just as much as it's always mattered. Systemic racism is still a problem. You see it all the time today. You just might not be looking. I live in the city, right? I, I hear a lot of people talking about this all the time. I didn't hear a lot about this back when I lived in a little town. Whether that's people not caring, not acknowledging it, maybe truly not knowing. I don't know and I don't really care. Point is you don't know if you're not in certain areas, or you're not in certain families or cultures. So I'd like to spread a little bit of that to you. I'd like to point it up. On the screen is a lot of information we're going to be learning. And I do say we. I'm, I don't know a lot of this. I'm not going to act like I do. I would say looking at all this. I know a handful of them. Maybe not even. Maybe I know the concepts and I don't remember the names. But we are going to be learning together. It's a nice little timeline made by Black Pass, by the way, blackpass.org, a very incredibly useful website. It has a lot of amazing information laid out in such a unique way. They made this just for Black History Month. There's like so much more up here. And I encourage you to go here and even donate. I know after the stream, I'm probably going to throw them five bucks. I know it's not a lot, but you know, it's, it's buffer money. So we're going to start with the very first thing on this list, which is the Nashville Streetcar Boycott. Let's learn what that is, because I haven't heard of it. And I learned when I was testing this website out that if you zoom in far enough, it just full screens the whole article, which is really based. Sure, we can look at it like this, and it'll, it'll work, but why don't we just full screen it? Yeah, there we go. Can you read this okay, Tfx? We're going to be reading together. Or maybe I am. Uh, depends if you want me as your fucking background noise or not. Um, Size is fine to me. Excellent, thank you. This is a photo of the Union Transportation Company vehicle. <clears throat> Alright, so let's read what this is about. In 1896, the U.S. Supreme Court ru ruling the Plessy v. Ferguson, oh, I do know about that one, uh, made segregationist law permissible anywhere in the United States as long as railroads, streetcars, and other public conveyances provide equal accommodations for blacks and whites. The decision, which served the constitutional underpinning for the, nation for the nation's Jim Crow system, was resisted by black civil rights leaders across the United States. One example of resistance emerged in Nashville, Tennessee. Taking advantage of the su Supreme Court ruling in 1899, the Tennessee General Assembly attempted to expand the existing scope of segregation, mainly in railroads, by pro proposing legislation to make segregation laws apply to the streetcars. Although the proposal died the same year, in died the same year in Tennessee House Judiciary Committee, Committee. It was revived two years later in 1901 and was defeated by a 48 to 30 vote in the House of Representatives. Proponents of segregation law refused to give up, and the biennial session of 1903, they again pushed for the law's enactment in one passage in one passage of the act on june 7th 1903 however the tennessee supreme court ruled that the new street car law was unconstitutional two years later when general when the general assembly convened in january 1905 a newer version of the segregation law was introduced which addressed the concerns of the tennessee supreme court on january 10th i'm back Hello again, Indiana. You doing good? I hope so. On January 10th, um, Davidson County Representative yeah. Charles P. Foley. Dinner was good. Good. What'd you have? Of Nashville introduced Bill Number 87 to separate white and black passengers on streetcars. 
After two or three inconsequential amendments were, ad were adopted, the bill passed the lower house of fledged fettuccine and a single breadstick. Oh, fuck yeah. Was the Honestly, I'm more pogging about the breadstick, but still. <clears throat> the bill passed the lower house of legislature by a vote of 81 to 4. Dear God. It was then transmitted to the upper chamber where it was passed by 28 to 1. Fuck. The law, which passed on March 30th, 1905, was to become effective on July 5th, 1905, and required operators of streetcars designated by means of conspicuous signs, which part of the car was for white or black passengers, and the passengers who refused to occupy the radically design designated Seating area was subject to a fine not to exceed $25 in 1905. Dear fucking God. Yeah, you're, you're boned. You get that fine, you gotta leave the goddamn state. Reverend J.A. Jones, pastor of St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal AME Church and a prominent black leader in Nashville, Predicted that 9 out of 10 African Americans would rather avoid streetcars than accept a second class status. The Nashville Clarion, a black weekly newspaper edited by Reverend Edward W.D. Isaac, urged its, re its readers to buy buggies if they could afford them and, if not, to walk. On July 5th, 1905, the day the new law went into effect, Black Nashvilleans boycotted the Nashville Transit Company. Once initiated, the transit company lost hundreds of customers per day and saw its revenue drop dramatically. Nashville streetcar the Nashville streetcar boycott soon became the largest example of an urban transportation protest before the Montgomery bus boycott half a century later. In addition to avoiding the Nashville streetcars, a group of prominent local blacks created the tr Union Transportation as a black-owned alternative to the segregated Nashville, yeah, segregated Nashville Transit Company streetcars. Chartered on August 29, 1905 and operational by October 3, 1905, the new company began to experience difficulty with its steam-driven cars, and later its electric-powered car, uh, power, electric powered buses. Also by October, many blacks slowly began to return to the Nashville Transit Company streetcars. By 1907, the company closed, but the boycott, bo boycott itself effectively ended by 1906. So I think if we zoom out a little... It'll let us. How do I? There we go. Should we go categorically? Or should we do all of them? How long did that take? 10 minutes? Let's count how, how many there are. Let's assume that they're roughly the same length. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, minus the one we just did, 23, 23 times 10 is 230 minutes, 60 minutes in an hour, 60, 120, 182, okay. So I don't think we can do a four hour stream because I think my voice will break. So I, I suppose we have to decide which ones to skip, which is already going to be one hell of a hot water. So fuck it. We just go ahead and we'll figure it out later. This one, this one's important. The National Association for Advancement of Colored People and the Lo Long Struggle for Civil Rights in the United States. A 
sign that states a man was lynched yesterday. Flag NAACP headquarters, 69th Fifth Avenue, New York City, 1936. Now, give me a moment, for I have to swap around the cassette that just ended in my room, so there's more background noise. next one. In 2009, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People celebrated its 100th Buffer is small. Buffer is now big. Buffer is tiny. Buffer is fucking huge. Be big now. (laughs) Yeah. Celebrated its 100th anniversary. In the article below, historian Susan Bragg provides a brief introduction to the history of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, the oldest continually active civil rights organization in the United States. I have to stop for a moment to take drinks. My tongue's already dry and we're only one in. Founded in 1909, The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People has provided critical institutional support and leadership in the fight against racial racial inequalities in America. Although sometimes criticized as too modern, moderate, or bureaucratic in nature, the NAACP's repeated legal campaigns eventually overturned the infamous 1896 Supreme Court ruling sanctioning segregation, Plessy v. Ferguson, and is still significantly political, still a significantly political organization to this day. So we can already tell they're based. <sighs> All right, let us set the scene. An image in your head, if you will. A violent mob attack on black residents of Springfield, Illinois, in 1908, galvanized a handful of progressive white social activists to reach out to African American leaders. Socialist William Eng- English Walling, sorry, I just like choked on myself. William English Walling, settlement house worker Mary White Ovington, 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 Jewish social worker Henry. Moskowitz, and Oswald Garrison Villard, editor of the The Nation, I guess that's a paper or something, circulated The Call to protest the rise of racial violence and discrimination around the nation, around the world. Um, they were joined in this venture by black sociologist um, W.E.B. Du Bois. Oh, Du Bois. Um, Long a critic of the social uplift agenda advocated by black educator Brooker T. Washington, Du Bois saw the NAACP as both an opportunity to reinvigorate demands for full black civil rights and an important reminder of the national dimensions of Jim Crow. For those of you who don't know, the Jim Crow laws... How do I summarize this in... I'm going to use a single sentence to summarize them. Jim Crow laws are like... Se- like segregation and basically... Uh, one hell of a backbone for... A lot of systematic and not so systematic... Re- fucking racism. Just just racism. I'm not, I'm not even going to fucking give it a subcategory. It's fucked. It's fuck defects. Um, Anyways, after a series of meetings held in 1909 and 1910, the NAACP emerged as an organization dedicated to protesting racial inequality in American public life. And I do apologize. Some of these are more... hmm, Impersonally. And when I say that, I mean rather just name, date, name, date. I like it when there's 
more intimate details to recallings, but you know, everything's written differently. Over the course of the 20th century, the NAACP inexplicably promoted itself as the model of interracial exchange, while also implicitly encouraging activism by both men and women. Initially, formal national leadership national leadership positions in the NAACP were largely held by white progressive based by white progressives based in New York City, but W.E.P. Du Bois served as editor of the organization's main source of publicity, The Crisis. This important journal circulated news of civil rights activism and promoted black art, writing, and poetry with the vision of challenging mainstream stereotypes of African Americans. African Americans made up the majority of participants in many local NAACP chapters that spread slowly throughout the nation and by the era of World War I, a new cadre, cadre? C-A-D-R-E, of black male leaders such as James Weldon Johnson and Walter White emerged as national leaders of the organization. I'm sorry, my, my, I'm so sorry to everyone that my brain saw Walter White and was like, drugs, Jesse, Jesse, we get like, you know, the dude from Breaking Bad, cause, cause, cause Walter White, you know, put on the little suit. What did he make? Was it crack? What did he make? Okay. Defects. What drug did Walter White make? Uh, the. No, I can see. What? Meth. He made meth. Thank you. I don't really know my drugs. Um, shit, where was I? Uh, where was I? Oh, there we go. At the same time... I the did a fucking double take hearing that name, too. <laughs> At the same time, the organization regularly regularly relied upon black women's participation, particularly at the branch level. While prominent anti-lynching activist Ida B. Wells Barnett uh, reported feeling dismissed by both black male leaders and white female progressives associated with the organization, many women associated with the National Association of Colored Women, NACW, supported the goals of the NAACP through fundraising activities and membership drives. By the 1930s, women like, oh no, I'm white, <laughs> women like Juanita uh, Jackson Michelle and Ella Baker emerged as important staff workers in the national organization of the NAACP. If I say any of these wrong, which there's likely a chance I'm gonna, please correct me. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People challenged racial inequalities largely by publicly publicity and targeted legal ch challenges. A program initially dictated by the fact that, that the majority of African Americans lived in the South, where direct protests against Jim Crow was dangerous. Yeah, that's pretty fucking scary. That's... fuck... Oh, let's be real defects. The South is scary even now. It like re worsened. They're like I mean they they are still very racist, but now they're like I guess they it, I guess they just have kind of more of a voice now. Shit, I don't even know. It's just more prominent to me because they're now attacking trans people too. So basically AK, I have bias, who would have guessed? Um I'm just more scared of them now. Anyways. Um. Oh, a program initially dictate, dictated by the fact that the majority of African Americans lived in the South, where directed pro, where direct protests against the Jim Crow was dangerous. Such tactics sometimes discourage grassroots activism by prioritizing the leadership role of the national staff, 
Yet the NAACP proved successful in winning some important early battles such as overturning the Grandfather Clause, Gwyn v. the United States, 1915, and residential segregation ordinances. Bushanan Buchan Buchanan uh, v. Warley, 1917. That name sounds so familiar. I might have learned about social history and just forgot. Honestly, I'm, I'm awful. <sighs> the organization also served as, served as an important voice against lynching throughout the 20th century, part particularly by lobbying for anti-lynching bills in, 19, in the 1920s and 1930s. That's right, defects. That was a thing. Uh, like, everyone thinks, oh, you know, 1700s lynching, 1800s. This was happening way into the 19th century, defects. They don't... 20th century? Whatever the fuck that is. Don't think it's a crazy thing in the past. Don't think, oh man. Fucking George Washington sure was a piece 20th of shit. Century? Yeah, thank you, Indiana. I forgot how centuries work. Don't just think, oh, you know, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln times, like... Ads. God! 90 seconds. Damn it, ads. Fuck. Alright, we'll, we'll, we'll pause. Thank you for letting me know, Tilde. We shall um, wait. Well, we got 90 seconds, se se seconds, it appears. Who can hear me right now? I think it's just you, Leo, right? Give me the update, you beautiful bastard. What you doing? Analyzing some chemicals? Or something cool like that? Because you're cool? <sighs> what do you got for me? First stretch routine. <sighs> Buffer stretch routine. Buffer stretch routine. Buffer stretch routine. Buffer stretch routine. I'm gonna copy this element. We're gonna we're gonna why don't we put it in the other? We're just gonna make it smaller. Add silver. Awesome. Thank you. All right, cool. <gasps> How y'all doing? I definitely just die a little bit there. Whew. Holding up good? Y'all y'all still alive and kicking and well? I know I've read you a lot of words, but I hope some of it's at least picking up. You know, for example, that uh, shit's fucked, shit was fucked, and still is. Remember, this is the 1920s and 1930s. I am alive. This was happening a lot sooner than y'all probably thinking, or maybe not. I don't know what you do and don't know. Like, seriously. Oh, right. The organization also served as an important voice against lynching throughout the 20th century, particularly- It said the 20th century! Why was I so confused? Um, particularly by lobbying for anti-lynching bills in the 1920s and 1930s. Despite the failure of these legislative efforts, early court vi victories and increasing national publicity reinforced the NAACP's commitment to forcing change through the political pressure and legal campaigns. Through political- Shut up, I know how words work. Most prominently, a series of NAACP-funded challenges to education inequalities eventually led to Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, 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 uh, 1954, the Supreme Court ruling overturned de jure segregation. Now that reminds me of the, the defects. I'm going to go into a little thing real quick. I learned this a while ago. I learned this in uh, Miss McNamara's social hi social studies class, history class. I love her till this day. She taught me so many things I didn't know back in high school. Um, one of things 
these things, um, and I'm speaking from years ago, so I might not have it exact, so please correct me if I'm wrong. But, um, the thing, the, the, there were many fights against, um, educational segregation, you know, where they used to have, uh, all black schools, all white schools, shit like that, right? You, you weren't allowed to go into the other, no matter what, unless you want your fucking legs broken or some shit. Um, the, the, the fucking information they used to finally overrule it was um proof of the emotional damage and mental like like the effect lasting effect it has the what you learn from it um it's really sad so what they did is um if i recall correctly they had some um black girls like like children little children who don't know much defects because they're little they gave them two dolls they asked something about them like they, they there was like a white doll and there was a black doll and they asked the kids to describe the one of the dolls for i assume it was fuck, i don't know they asked how to describe the the white doll first, you know, just give a description, you know, what do they look like? What are they like, you know? The they they would describe them as like some sort of positive shit, probably pretty or something or fuck, I don't know. <laughs> pretty and kind and sweet. I'm just giving you rough. Um and then they gave them the black doll. And they were suddenly saying things like mean and ugly and stupid and shit like that no kid should have to think about things like no kid should have those thoughts they were like simple dolls which really just sets in stone what the fuck how fucked it was the the these are emotional scars defects you don't just like the these are these are fucking things that are just written to their goddamn minds young because they see it everywhere they experienced it everywhere and it was just stabbed into their lives defects i can't express that enough how much damaged de how much damage it caused And that's, you don't get more proof than that, defects. And that's what they use to fight um, segregational education. And I think that I, unless I, I, I'm remembering wrong, that was the proof they used to win that and stop segregated education altogether. It's sad, it's fucked, but it's the truth. But, that's just how it is. Now, y'all feel free to fact check me and give me give me any corrections for the shit that I haven't, uh, I don't remember exactly anymore. I, I think I got pretty damn close to the overall information. It might just be a little off, like a single, single thing. Like, oh, Buffer, they actually used three dolls or some shit. I don't fucking know. Anyways. you criticize it never did, 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 did. i'm gonna scroll through some of this because we i probably shouldn't i'm just all bummed out thinking about that again those poor kids i'm so fucked the naacp's emphasis on civil rights agendas supported its larger cultural vision of american pluralism but over the years the organization has been repeatedly criticized as narrow or even elitist while the crisis while the crisis emerged as a critical source of black creative expressionism expression during the harlem renaissance of the 1920s marcus garvey's united negro improvement association unia 
gained more members because of its grassroots emphasis on black unity and community development. In the 1930s, the, a uh, ugh, the NAACP created influential relationships with Northern Democrats through its anti-lynching efforts, even as it struggled to assert a strong vision of economic justice. The organization finally built a mass improvement uh, a mass movement during the years of World War II by pressing the Double V campaign to to in to integrate the defense industries, partnering with the CIO and other labor unions, and extending branches into the South. Shit, fuck, I scrolled too hard. All right, only two more paragraphs, defects. All right, all right. Then we get to take a little break, and the break is. Other conversation, other conversation before we get back into it. These developments in combination with the NAACP's continuing legal campaigns against segregation provided critical support for the modern civil rights movements. At the same time, the NAACP has struggled to both defend itself against the criticism of outside pressures and to trans translate legal victories into broader social change. Defenders of Jim Crow denounced the NAACP as radical organization as a radical organization and sought to restrict its development in southern states. Yet, by the 1960s, the organization also found itself pressured by youth-led protests that rejected the mediating role of the NAACP in favor of the direct activism and grand grassroots interests. These tensions reflected the larger difficulty of defining the NAACP's social justice agenda in the years after Brown versus Board. While the NAACP continues to identify and protest various forms of racial inequality in America, finding resolutions to de facto forms of ra racial, discrimi racial discrimination have proved an ongoing challenge. Ultimately, the NAACP remains a powerful watchdog organization, promoting African-American opportunity as a gauge of American democratic health. Boop. Oh, shit. I minimized OBS. All right, there we go. There we go. I fixed OBS because I'm awesome. Buffer God routine. Bow down to me. Who are you is still here? I know you're here, Indiana. I know, I think you're here, Scarlet. Leor is probably doing work, but they're still here. I hope you, uh, I hope more defects are here. Y'all better learn this. It's okay to be quiet. You can just stay lurking, but I hope you're here. I hope you're learning. And if you're not learning, defects, de defects. during all of the stream, ask questions. Please ask questions. I want you to ask as many questions as you can if you have a single one. Because we'll look it up and we'll learn together. Because if you have a question and you you don't know something, I guarantee someone else also doesn't. And that's what we're here to do today. We're here to learn and understand. Or at least fucking try to, that's for sure. Alright? I want to make sure you know. 749, and we're only down two of them, so this is taking a little longer than I thought for each of them. Hmm. Let's see, I don't want to... I don't feel comfortable, like, skipping them, but I want to hit some core ones, if you will. How do I do that? How do I even designate which ones are... Oh shit. I think this is the thing I was just talking about before. All right. Defects. I think I have a plan. I'm looking at all of this. I'm looking at everything. So the reds seem to be group. Oh my god, there's a key right there and I didn't even notice. The reds are groups. Individuals are in green. 
speeches that are very important, do not get me wrong, are purple. What I'm going to do, I'm going to sort it by events. I'm going to, like, when there's a bunch of roots uh, or similar things, I'm going to try to, like, cover at least one and then, because there's a lot here. So let's skip right on to the Tussle Massacre of 1921. Now, this is something I've never heard of. I, I, I don't recognize that name at all. Let's learn and see oh. what horrors have been created. Or occurred? Not created. These events Oh, happened. God. This incident. Oh, God. This incident, indeed. Probably. I don't know. I read about this in Nat Geo once. Ooh. Ba based upon your reaction, Indiana. Dear God. If you're, if you're apprehensive about it, I'm terrified. Um, and I mean this lovingly. Um... But you know what, DFX? I'm gonna be right back in a minute. You wanna know why? Cause it's piss time, that's why. Let's read what fucked up things have occurred here 
in nine June of nineteen twenty one. Because this image, if this is what this is, holy fuck, did they burn half the goddamn town? Well, I guess we'll learn. We'll learn right now, defects. Why I say it like multiply? We'll learn right now, defects. Oh, God, okay. This entry is for juvenile audiences. To see the full version of this entry, click here. They dropped bombs from Eric. Eric. Oh, my God. Well, well. We'll find out just how bad it was. Um, what happened? A confrontation between black and white people broke out in 1921 in Tusla, Oklahoma, which led to the Tusla Massacre. The black neighborhood called Greenwood, or Black Wall Street, was burnt to the- Oh, this is my question. Burnt to the ground. 1,400 black homes and businesses were destroyed. Millions of dollars they literally were threatened lost. to fire at first responders. Oh, hey, look at that. It reminds me of a uh, fucking police responding to first person. First person? God, I'm an idiot. To school shooters. Nope, not allowed in there. We're just gonna surround the place. Um, anyways. <sighs> Millions of dollars were lost, and 10,000. Black people were left homeless. Fuck, dude. Why is it important to know about? The Tusla Race Massacre of 1921 was one of the worst attacks against a black community in the history of the United States. Up to 300 people were murdered. Black people were living peacefully among themselves and they did not start or cause the massacre. Oh, yeah! Hold on. Tulsa. I was reading as Tulsa. <sighs> Not Tuzla. Unless I'm tweaking. No, you're correct. Defects, as you'll notice, just as I'm reading this, if you haven't already, I often mix up letters sometimes, or words, or I'll just not notice an entire word. I don't know why. I'm working on it, and I think it just has something to do with my reading comprehension. I used to be perfect, and Selexia? then- I don't think so. Maybe. I don't. Probably not. I think it just has to do with my reading comprehension. Like, I used to do a lot of it, and then COVID happened. I didn't do a reading for like oh, quite a while, and then here we are. Actually, I suppose I've always had a little bit of. Well, we'll come to that conclusion or consideration after, I guess. <laughs> Who knows? Is dyslexia a scale? Because maybe like a little bit of it, like a sprinkling, like a little, a little, a little salt in the wounds worth. Anyways. <sighs> Details Isn't of everything event. a scale? I don't know. Is it? It's a good fucking question, isn't it? Details of the event. Black Wall Street was one of the wealthiest black communities yep. in the United States. Oh, shit. Well, now we know. Um, the community had its own doctors, lawyers, teachers, dentists, and entertainers. There were over 200 black-owned small businesses, but some white people in Tul Tulsa were not happy. They did not like that black people were so successful. There was a lot of anger and jealousy. The newspaper article in the Tulsa Tribune printed a story about a 19-year-old black boy named Dick Rowland. Sarah Page was a 17-year-old white girl. Dick Rowland was accused of possibly harming her in an elevator. The story turned out to be false. Dick Rowland was held at the courthouse. A large crowd of armed white men came to the courthouse. A smaller crowd of armed black men came to protect Dick Rowland. Angry words between a white man. Oh god, I why is scrolling so oh right, this is extremely zoomed in. Hold on. Angry words between a white man and a black man turned ugly. A shot from a gun was fired. It quickly got out of control. A mob of white men went to Black Wall Street. 
They attacked and murdered innocent people. They burned down homes and businesses. The massacre lasted for two days. The police rounded up black men who were jailed, although they had not done anything wrong. Most of the white men were only disarmed and told to go home. Well, um, the lasting impact. The public did not want to hear about an angry white mob. White men had killed, burned, and destroyed black people's lives and property. There was an investigation to see if a crime was committed. It was decided that the blacks caused the... <laughs> what pieces of shit. Oh yeah, that's totally what happened. Definitely. <sighs> blacks caused the riot. No white man was ever charged with murder, stealing, or damaging property. Justice was never served, defects. People have not talked about this for nearly 100 years. The 2020 movie Black Wall Street Burning is making people aware of, the Tulsa, of Tulsa's dark past. Tulsa is finally learning about its history. What we learn from this event? When people are ashamed of their actions, they refuse to talk about it. People need to take responsibility for their wrongdoing. Healing can happen when the truth comes out. Seriously, defects. I can't overstate that. Get uncomfortable. Learn. Don't forget shit that happened and act like it didn't happen or convince yourself it didn't. And hey, if any of this hits a little too, bar too hard, a little fucking straightforward, it doesn't have to stay that way. Defects, all of you are wonderful and I love you so much. I know all of you have good in you. I know all of you are good. So if there's anything you might uh might have conflictions with, any problems with it, it doesn't have to say that way. You can always learn. People can always learn. You can. Get Ashamed, you yeah, can. that's totally why they don't talk about it. You can learn. I believe in you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely not. Ashamed. This is like... Goddamn Sparks Note version. What is the fucking... What are the differences? Yeah, fuck the kids version. Hold on. I'm gonna just give you a few details that were provided from before, but like... So we're gonna skim through some of it. By the early morning of June 1st, the wholesale burning and pillaging of Black Tulsa began. Blacks were greatly outnumbered, and the police were not effective in controlling the riot. The National Guard declared martial law throughout the city at 11.29 a.m., Bring an end to the most to most to most bring an end to most violence. The guard then began rounding up blacks for internment. Uh, mo most white rioters turned to their homes on the night of June first, while much of Tulsa's black population was imprisoned. The total number of people killed during the riot is debatable. Estimates range from twenty seven to over two hundred and fifty. It is generally believed that the number of deaths have been underestimated. Um, the coyotes are going fucking insane outside my house. Nice! It took nearly a decade for Tulsa to recover from the physical destruction it endured from the riot. Despite significance, both black and white Tulsans claim the incident has been hushed up and not, adi and not adequately, recognize adequately recognized. It was scarcely mentioned in history books, especially Oklahoman history books. In 1996, Oklahoma formed a commission to investigate the riot and prepare a historical account. The Tulsa, I keep saying Tulsa Race Mass Massacre Commission issued its report on February 2001. It recommended restitution for African American survivors and the descendants and their descendants, a scholarship fund for descendants economic development in Greenwood District and a memorial for the victims. Yeah, shit happened, defects, shit happened, and it was bad. This we can agree on. Alright. 
Scottsboro Boys Trial or the Detroit Race Riot? Detroit Race Riot, Scottsboro. What are we thinking? Hmm. Do, 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 do. I say, I don't know nothing about this one. We're doing this one. I don't know shit about this. Let us learn shit about this. I'm going to take off my shoes because I'm starting to overheat. Scottsboro Boys Trial and Defense uh, Campaign. 1931 till 1937. Scottsboro <laughs> Boys with Attorney Samuel Leibowitz. Leibowitz. Seated left. Um, 1932. The Scottsboro Boys were nine young black men falsely accused of raping two white women on a train near Scottsboro, Alabama, in 1931. Convicted and facing execution, the case of Charlie Weems, Ozzie Powell, Clarence Norris. Ads. No! All right, advertisement. I'm gonna like. Thanks for the info, carrot. I need to, I need to like. Enunciate things better. I, I need to. I cannot just read. I need to. Like in my head, I'm processing it different parts with different intensities. But I need to convey that. That is what I'm here for. I need to. Need to. Need to get big on that defects. I need. I need. I need to. Give you the flair. Shaky hands, the, the the fucking. I need to convey it with more force. And that is what I plan on doing. <clears throat> now we await information that the advertisements have come to an end. And then we shall continue. Right, defects? Mm -hmm. Over. Awesome. All right. Olin Montgomery, Willie Rob Willie Robertson, Haywood Patterson, Eugene Williams, and Andrew and Leroy Wright sparked international demonstrations and succeeded in both highlighting the racism of American le of the American legal system and in overturning the conviction. On March 25, 1931, nine unemployed young men illegally riding on the rails looking for work were taken off a freight train in Scottsboro, Alabama and held on a minor charge. The Scottsboro deputies found two white women, Ruby Bates and Victoria Price, and pressured them into accusing the nine youths of raping them on board the train. The charge of raping white women was an explosive accusation, and within two weeks, the Scottsboro boys were convicted eight were convicted. Eight were sentenced to death, but the youngest, Leroy, Leroy Wright, was sentenced to life in imprisonment. The American Communist Party, CP. Oh. I'm, I'm not going to put those two letters. I'm going to say Communist Party. Uh, in this period, at the height of its organ... Organizing focus in the American South against racism and economic exploitation immediately took the case on, and largely enough, a uh, largely though no. acted. Fox King, laughing. <laughs> and largely through activist efforts, sparked a mass defense movement. The Communist Party brought in their. <laughs> sorry, sorry. The Communist Party brought in their legal arm, 
the International Labor Defense, ILD, to represent the nine. ACP. ACP? Oh! Why isn't there an A there? Yeah. To represent the nine, after two trials in which all... A rural harder, a harder, a harder, a harder, a harder. <gasps> Samantha! Hello again. Welcome, welcome. I'm glad to see that you are joining us here today. How are you doing? What's up? And what are you up to? I hope to find out, and I hope you stay a while. Please learn more with us. We're in the middle of this page, so you're- I'm doing okies. Yay! We're in the middle of this page, so it'll be a little confusing. But once we finish this one, we'll go back to another one, and you'll be on the same page as us. Sound good? Awesome. After two trials in which all, it, in which an all-white jury, jury fueled by a biased Alabama press convicted the nine, the ILD and the ACP began a national protest campaign to overturn the conviction, marked by numerous street marches national and international speaking tours and popular songs because be, why the fucking screen do that because of their principled leadership in campaign in the campaign the acp gained much widespread respect among the among the african americans and civil rights activists when they traveled to washington dc to demonstrate the ACP stopped at segregated restaurants to stage sit-ins against discrimination, helping to turn the campaign into a trial of the system of segregation and racism in America. Presaging? Presaging? Pre... Presaging the sit-ins... Sit-in tactics of the 1960s civil rights movement. Although initially hostile to the communists and wary of being involved in the touchy issue of black men raping white women, the National Associations for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, we learned about them earlier, ultimately joined with the ACP and other civil rights organizations to form the Scottsboro Defense Committee. Eventually, one of the white women, Ruby Bates, came forward to rep repudiate? her testimony, acknowledging that she and Price had been pressured into falsely accusing the Scottsboro boys, and she became part of the campaign to save their lives. Hell yeah, let's go! That's, I'm, I'm happy to hear she, I mean, the first part's obviously fucked, but I'm glad she's at least trying to help out here. Ooh, my ear's ringing, I love tinnitus. So, the case, last paragraph, the case went to the United States Supreme Court in 1937 and the lives of the nine were saved, though it was almost 20 years before the last defendant was freed from- What? No! What the fuck? That's so long. Oh my god. Hardly a victory for them. Really? Huh? Sorry, defects. I just got. God. Um, the trial of the Scottsboro Boys is perhaps one of the proudest of moments in American radicalism, in which a mass movement of blacks and whites, led by communists and radicals, successfully beat the Jim Crow legal system. Sorry, defects. I just got a little taken back by by that by that last detail. It was like after all that work, he won, but it didn't really win for some of them. That's fucking awful. Anyways, the Detroit race. <laughs> uh. All right. All right. Have you had a good night so far, uh, Samantha? 
Anything fun today? Nothing cool? Um. Pulling a man off a streetcar short by. Okay. <sighs> the Detroit race riot of 1943 lasted only about 24 hours from 10.30 on June 20th to 11 p.m. Uh, to June 20th to 11 p.m. On June 21st. Oh, wait, fuck, God damn it! Only about 24 hours from 10.30 on June 20th to 11 p.m. on June 21st. Nonetheless, it was considered one of the worst riots during wor the World War II era. Rare defects. We, we have moved on to the World War II era. Keep that in mind. Think about everything that's happening around the rest of the world during all of this. Several contributing factors revolved around police brutality and the sudden influx of black immigrants from the south into the city, lured by the promise of jobs in, def in defense plants. The migrants faced an acute housing shortage that many thought would be reduced by the construction of public housing. However, the construction of public housing for blacks in predominantly white neighborhoods often created racial tension. The Sojourner, Tooth Home, Sojourner Truth Homes Riot in 1942, for example, which this is a big one if you don't know. Read, read about this at some point. Or don't. I don't have control over you. But it is. It's, learn about it. Began when whites were enraged by the opening of that project in their neighborhood. Mobs attempted to keep the black residents from moving into their new homes. That confrontation laid the founding for the much larger riot one year later. On June 20th, a warm Saturday evening, a fistfight broke out between a black man and a white man at the sprawling Belle Isle amusement park in the Detroit River. The brawl eventually grew into a confrontation between groups of blacks and whites and then spilled into the city. Stores were looted and buildings were burned in the riot, most of which were located in a black neighborhood. The riot took place in an area of roughly two miles in and around Paradise Valley, one of the oldest and poorest neighborhoods in Detroit, Michigan. As the violence escalated, both blacks and whites engaged in violence. Blacks dragged whites out of cars and looted white-owned stores in Paradise Valley, while white whites overturned and burned black-owned vehicles and attacked African Americans on streetcars along Woodward Avenue and other major streets. The Detroit police did little in, riot in the rioting, often siding with the white rioters in the violence. The violence defects ended only after President Franklin Roosevelt, at the request of Detroit Mayor Edwin Jeffries Jr., ordered 6,000 federal troops into the city. 25 blacks and 9 whites were killed in the violence. Of the 25 Amer African Americans who died, 17 were killed by the police. 17 were killed by the police. Keep this in mind, defects. The police are really good at killing anyone who isn't white, really. Um, the police claimed that these shootings were justified since the victims were engaged in looting stores on Hastings Street. Of the nine whites who died, none were killed by the police. The city suffered an estimated two million in property damages. Holy balls. That was 820. We are an hour and 20 minutes into this. What do you think, Defects? I am considering going till 830. I will maybe longer. I don't want to skip too much. I will not compromise on skipping Brown versus the Board of Education. 
the Civil Rights Act, Martin Luther King's assassination. Unsure. And Morgan versus Virginia. I'm going to go back to this one. One of you look up which one this is because I don't. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, it literally gives us a spark note. God. All right, shit. I'm going to cover the ones we didn't touch real quick. Hope that's too far. Gwen versus the United States. On June 21st, the U.S. Supreme Court overturns the Oklahoma grandfather clause in Gwen versus the United States. Uh, the East Lewis race riot. East Lewis race riot began July 1st. 40 people were killed and 6,000 were driven from their homes. Chicago race riot. 25 race riots in the place of the United States summer 1919. The largest is in Chicago from July 27th to August 1st, where 38 people were killed. All right, Smith versus Zarek. On April 3rd, the U.S. Supreme Court in Smith v. Allwright uh, declared white-only political pri primaries unconstitutional. All right, there we go. Brown versus the Board of Education. This one defects is related to what I was talking about before. Well, not related. It just is. You know what I mean. I don't even know what the U.S. Supreme Court looks like. I I know I'm looking at it, but I don't know if this is updated or recent or fuck. Who knows? Um. May thirty first, nineteen fifty five. Opinion and judgments announced. Opinion. Mister Chief Justice Warren delivered an opinion of the court. The opinion of the court. These cases were decided on May 17, 1954. The opinions of that date, N1, declaring the fundamental principle that racial discrimination in public education is unconstitutional and are incorporated herein by reference. All provisions of federal, state, or local law requiring or permitting such discrimination must yield to this principle. There remains for consideration the manner in which relief is to be accorded. I don't know law speak. I don't know what the fuck this means. Footnotes. Footnotes. Foot. What is? What am I reading? Illegal documents. I don't understand what I'm, I'm trying to understand what I'm looking at. I can understand these. Oh, you know, you know how to uh, understand these. Racial discrimination. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'm gonna, since I don't really know what I'm looking at, at least, I'm glad you do, uh, but I don't, we're just gonna, All right. Here I ever go. tell you about that time I was in a political simulation game? Oh, God, that's... No, you have not. The NAACP's primary goal upon its founding... Oh, we already know what that is. We already know what that is. There we go. Brown versus, uh, yeah, Brown versus the Board of Education. The early string of decisive legal victories for the civil rights activists laid the foundation for Marshall and the NAACP to launch a head-on attack on the Plessy v. Ferguson decision. In 1951, they accepted the case of Oliver Brown of Topeka, Kansas. 
who wanted his daughter to be able to attend an all-white elementary school. Yeah, that was the story where the lower house voted yes on a bill for the sole reason that it violated people's privacy. Oh. Rather than a black school several miles away. The case of Brown versus the Board of Education uh, eventually worked its way up to the Supreme Court, where Marshall argued that racial segregation relegated black Americans to second-class citizenship. Chief Justice Earl Warren, 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 though appointed by the conservative, conservative Dwight D. Eisenhower, sympathized with black Americans and pressured the wavering justices on the bench to vote in Brown's favor. Warren knew that only a unanimous decision would be powerful enough to quiet racists and truly overturn Plessy v. Ferguson. After two justices had been persuaded in making groundbreaking un unanimous Brown v. Board education make, to make the brown, groundbreaking unanimous Brown v. Board of Education decision in May 1954, Warren announced that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. A subsequent ruling a year later ordered s local school boards to desegregate schools, but set no specific timetable for doing so. Unfortunately, the second decision made federal district judges in charge of supervising the desegregation process, effectively ensuring non-compliance and opposition in the South. Still, Brown v. Board of Education was the landmark legal victory the NAACP had been striving for since its formation nearly half a century earlier. The decision revitalized the 14th Amendment and paved the way for the future, for future civil rights legislation. I was really hoping they'd talk about the method they used to win it, because that, that info is so important. Oh, well. 28? The first sit-ins defects, 1958. Okay. Laura Looper, 1923-2011. Fair use image. Clara May Looper was born in Okfuskey, Okfuske, County, Oklahoma, to Enzel and Isabel Shepard on May 3rd, 1923. She attended an all-black school's attended all-black schools and was bused several miles to Grayson High School, where she graduated in a class of five. After graduating from the segregated Langston University, Looper became the first African-American student to enroll in the history department of at the United at the University of Oklahoma, earning a master's degree in 1951. Fuck yeah! Good job! I sure as hell can't get a master's degree, is that sure? That's so much time. Fuck. Looper was one of Oklahoma's early leaders in the civil rights movement during the 1950s. She taught history in various Oklahoma City public schools for 41 years and became the sponsor of Oklahoma City of the Oklahoma City NAACP Youth Council. In 1958, working with this group, she led the earliest sit-ins in Oklahoma and some of the first United and some of the first in the United States. Though these protests, she and other civil rights activists through these protests, she and other civil rights activists succeed in, in integrating many public facilities in Oklahoma City and across the state by 1964. 
1957, Looper escorted her Dungy High School Dungy 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 High School students to New York City, New York, to perform a play she had written, Brother President, the story of Dr. M- Martin Luther King, for a national freedom rally. Inspired by nonviolent activism, she and her students returned determined to end segregation in Oklahoma. They stage a sit-in at Cat's Drug Store counter in August 1958. This this sit-in led to numerous other demonstrations at lunch counters, cafeterias, churches, and amusement parks, as well as marches, voter registration drives, and boycotts. She was arrested 26 times for her civil rights activities. The Oklahoma City Council responded with an ordinance ending racial discrimination shortly before 1964 before the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Um Looper participated well as well participated as well in the civil rights marches with Dr. Mo- Martin Luther King. Why do I keep doing that? Dr. Luther. I like take the M and put it on Luther. <laughs> Yeah, you might be right, Scarlet. I might be dyslexic. Shit. Is this the way I'm gonna find out? Fuck. Marches with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in Washington, D.C. and Selma, Alabama. Looper also fought for the integration of Oklahoma City schools and organized the Oklahoma City Sanitation Strike in 1969. Nice. Um, she was a candidate for the, the for the U.S. Senate Senate in 1972 and founded the Freedom Center Incorporated in 1979. A Freedom Center Incorporated. In 1979, she published her memoir "Behold the Walls" and later developed the Black Voices magazine, now called America's Voices. Looper also hosted a radio talk show in Oklahoma City between 1960 and 1980. Looper continued to lecture on behalf of racial justice until illness forced her retirement in 2008. Aw. Clara Looper received many honors in her later years. She was inducted into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame in 2007. A scholarship was re- established in her name at Oklahoma City University, and Oklahoma City named a street, the Clara Looper Corridor. That's cool. I want to be a street. Hell yeah. In her honor. In 2009, she received the National Education Association's Rosa Parks Memorial Award. Upon her death in June 8, 2011, Oklahoma officials... Uh, honored her by placing her casket to lie in, resp- in repose around the rotuna of the state of the state capitol building and flying flags at half staff. She is survived by a son, Calvin, and two daughters, Marilyn H- Hildreth and Shell Wilson. Look at her go. Fuck yeah. All right, defects. What do you What do you thinking next? Greensboro sit in. Wait, no, I'm dumb. Hold on. Yeah, civil rights act, baby. Let's fucking go. Big one right here, defects. It's big. It's huge. It's important. Gather round, children. Come here, come there. Come hither, my... Sorry, I was reading something. Ah, 1964. Ooh, I saw Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah! Also, hi, Trin! Hello, 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 hello. Welcome by, and thank you for stopping, too. I hope you stay with us tonight, as we're learning many important parts and pieces of history... And just give us a tiny perspective into why this month is so important. As well as probably everything else honoring this 
history. This American history. Which, seriously, we need to acknowledge that this is How just... are you, Buffer? I'm good, Trin. How are you? I hope you're doing good. All right. Radio and television address at the signing of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. One hour late, though. Hey, one hour late is better than never, and I appreciate you stopping by. All that I ask is when everything's done and is on Twitch as a VOD that you can watch, I would like to request that you watch the first, like, couple minutes, because it contains a lot of important information. And modern examples of information that must be known. But yeah, thank you. And uh, have fun with me. Have fun with us. Or at the very least, learn some things with us. Sound good? <sighs> Alright. The Civil Rights Act is considered by many historians as one of the most important measures enacted by the United States Congress in the 20th century. President Lady... Lyndon, Lyndon B. Johnson led by the national effort to pass led the national effort to pass the act. On July 2nd, 1964, he gave a televised address to the nation after signing a measure. After signing the measure, his speech appears below. He looks old, so I'm going to give him like a my fellow Americans, I am about to sign into law the Civil Rights Act of 1964. I want to take this occasion to talk to you about what that law means to every American. The 188, the 188 years ago, this week a small band of valiant men began a long struggle for freedom. They pledged their lives, their fortune, and their sacred honor not only to found a nation, but to forge an ideal freedom. Not only for political independence, but for personal liberty, not only to eliminate foreign rule, but to establish the rule of justice in the affairs of men. That struggle was a turning point in our history. Today, in far... Today, in far corners of distant con continents, the ideals of those American patriots still shape the struggles of men who hunger for freedom. This is a proud triumph. Yet those who founded our country knew that freedom would be secure only if each generation fought to renew and enlarge its meaning. From... Fucking... Yeah. Seriously. Never stop fighting defects. Even now. Don't fucking be passive about shit. Alright? Anyways. From the Minutemen at Concord to soldiers in Vietnam, each generation has been equal to that trust. Americans of every race and color have died in battle to protect our freedom. Americans of every race and color have worked to build a nation of widening opportunities. Now our generation of Americans has been called on on to continue the unending search for justice within our borders. We believe that all men are created equal, yet many are denied equal treatment. We believe that all men have certain unalienable rights, yet many Americans do not enjoy those rights. We believe that all men are entitled to their blessings of liberty, yet millions are being deprived of those blessings, not because of their own failures, but because of the color of their skin. The, re the reasons are deeply embedded into history and tradition and the nature of man. We can understand, without, without re rancor or hatred, how this all happened. But it cannot continue. Our constitution, the foundation of our republic, forbids it. The principles of our freedom forbid it. Morality forbids it. And the law I will sign tonight forbids it. 
That law is the product of months of the most careful debate and discussion. It was proposed more than one year ago by our late and beloved President John F. Kennedy. He proposed it? What? I'm confused. It's received the bipartisan support of more than two-thirds of the members of both the House and Senate. An overwhelming majority of Republicans as well as Democrats voted for it. It has received the thoughtful support of tens of thousands of civic and religious leaders in all parts of this nation. And it is supported by the greatest majority by the great majority of the American people. The purpose of this law is simple defects. It does not restrict the freedom of any American, so long as he respects the right of others. It does not give special treatment to any citizen. It does say the only limit to a man's hope for happiness and for the future of his children shall be his own ability. Notice that all of these say him, he, man. Anyways. It does say that there are those who are equal before God shall now also be equal in the polling in the in the polling booths, in the classrooms, in the factories and in hotels, restaurants, movie theaters, and other places that provide service to the public. I am taking steps to implement the law under my constitutional obligation to take care that the laws are faithfully executed. First, I will send to the Senate my nomination of Leroy Collins to be director of the Community Relations Service. Governor Collins will bring the experience of a long career of distinguished public services to the task of helping communities solve problems of human relations through reason and common sense. Second, I shall appoint an advisory committee of distinguished Americans to assist Governor Collins in his assignment. Third, I am sending Congress a request for supplemental appropriations to pay for necessary costs of implementing the law and for immediate action, and asking for immediate action. Fourth, already today, in a meeting of my cabinet this afternoon, I directed the agencies of, gov of this government to fully discharge the new responsibilities imposed upon them by the laws and to do it without delay and to keep me personally informed of their progress. Fifth, I am, a I am asking appropriate officials to meet, the re meet with representative groups to promote greater understanding of the law and to achieve the spirit of compliance. We must not approach, we must not approach the observance and enforcement of this law in vegetable spirit. Its purpose is to, not to punish, its purpose is not to divide, but to end divisions, divisions which have all lasted too long. Its purpose is national, not regional. Its purpose is to promote a more abiding commitment to freedom, a more constant pursuit of justice, and a deeper respect for human di dignity. We will achieve these goals because most Americans are law-abiding citizens who want to do what is right. This is why the Civil Rights Act relies first on voluntary compliance, then on efforts of local communities and states to secure the rights of citizens. It provides for the national authority to step in only when others cannot or will not do the job. This Civil Rights Act is a challenge to all of us to go to work in our communities and our states, in our homes and in our hearts to eliminate the last of the vestiges, vestiges, this of injustice in our beloved country. <gasps> Two more paragraphs, defects. And then we're good. All right. So tonight, I urge every public official, every religious leader, every business and professional man, every working man, every housewife, I urge, I urge every American to join us in this effort to bring justice and hope to all our people and to bring peace to our land. 
my fellow citizens, we have come now to a time of testing. We must not fail. Let us close the springs of racial poison. Let us, let us pray for wise and understanding hearts. Let us lay aside irrelevant differences to make our nation whole. Let us hasten that day when our unmeasured strength and unbound spirit will free, will be free to do the great works ordained for this nation by the just and wise God who is the father of us all. Thank you and good night. Why must it be religious too? But you know what? It's 1964. It is what it is, I guess. But you know, God damn it. But yeah, defects. Bet you haven't heard that before unless you have because guess what? I'm not you. I don't really know. I don't know what you've heard. I'm buffered, not you. Just scroll through so we can see how long it is. Woo! Oh, this is just actually a description of what the act is, huh? Basically, I, I think it just means, like, you know, race and color and shit ain't gonna matter when you're making votes. I'd certainly fucking hope so. Okay. After that. All right, defects. Let's get into this, huh? And defects. Remember, this happened in 1968. Just from the year 2000. That's, uh, what? Fucking let me do math in my head. 32 years? 32 years. At 24. 36. That's only 56 years ago, Defects. I know a bit about Martin. That's not long. If you know anyone older than 56, which, by the way, Defects, we all have to know some people that are older. They were alive when he died. This is recent Defects. I don't think I... I feel like there's... No, like... I hope you understand... How fucking recent this shit actually is. This ain't a million years ago. This ain't, oh, fucking ancient Roman times. Fuck, colonies, white wigs, and fucking yeah. muskets. This is fucking recent. We went to fucking Vietnam before we had this happen. I I should, you know, make sure this is aware. Like, we, we've processed this. Alright. Hmm. Let me just look real quick. Is it just going to have a speech, or is it going to talk about what happened? I love his speech. Oh my god, this is long. Alright, defects, defects, this, this is going to be the longest part of this, of this stream, alright, 
Trin, I'm glad you love it, because you're about to hear it, hear it shittily said from Buffer. Or maybe not. All good and ready to listen. What if we did the bass thing and heard it from the man himself? Let's look up a video. Let's look up a fucking video of him saying it. Let's hear it together. I, I would love to hear. I'd love to hear it from him. Give me a moment. I don't know why I'm thinking this still now. Ooh. I know I'm a genius, right? My brain's fucking gargantuan. Give me a moment. I didn't plan for this part, so I kind of have to just... Give me a minute. No way this man did it in fucking 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Oh. The full speech is 43 minutes long. I'm going to post the the uh, the full one, the really long one in the general channel of my server. And I want you defects once this is done, if you have even the slightest lick of curiosity, interest Watch it after. Put it in the background. You don't gotta put it on your main focus if you, uh, unless you have the time. I get it. We're all busy. Just let it happen. Let it listen to it in the background. Yeah. And for those of you who aren't in my server, https colon slash okay? slash discord dot gg slash It's right in the general. Hell, you can fucking leave after. That's alright if you want it. But I just want you to see it. All right. go defects let's wash it together shall we all we say to america is be true to what you said on paper if i lived in china or even russia or any totalitarian country Maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. And so just as I say we aren't going to let any dogs or water hoses turn us around, we aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. Buffer 17 heart. What will happen now? We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. I don't mind. Trying. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. Hi, Scarlet. Moi smile. I went there with you. But I want you to know the night. And we as a people will get to the promised land. At Trink's Files, watch this. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. is a 
Oh shit. Gives us a news report too? That's Martin right there. I'm gonna boost the desktop audio. Rem someone remind me. At Scarlet underscore V Teen Wa Smile. Remind me that it was set to negative thirty. I'm s I'm boosting this all the way. This is a CBS News special report. It's very quiet, and I I'm I've already set it to max, even with the audio adjuster. Turn, turn. It was set to minus 30. Thank you, Scarlet. Turn your volume up for this. I won't make noise with my mouth until it's done. Once this is done, I'll, I'll turn it down. Four. Dan Rather reporting for CBS News from New York. The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was shot to death by an assassin late today as he stood on a balcony in Memphis, Tennessee. Dr. King had planned to lead another civil rights march in Memphis next Monday. We got the latest on the story now from Russ Carr, news director at Heavenly Hearts Memphis. All righty. Back to negative three. There we go. My audio adjustment is finished. So I feel like I feel like that one video covered this way better than anything I could have done. All right. Defects. Alrighty, I bet you all love school shootings. That's all we get nowadays, defects, isn't it? Ha ha ha, Buffer made. Buffer made a fucked up joke. I'm really good at that, don't worry. Anyways, um. So. I like smoochies from Trin. Is this education? <laughs> Fantastic time to join in, gosh. What in Sand Hill? <laughs> Welcome. I'm glad to see you're in here, Sam. God, stop. Oh, God. We're, we're covering... Things that have happened in the past related to Buffer, this. what the f welcome. <laughs> Buffer, what the fuck are we doing? All right, explain all right. yourself. Explain your here. I'll explain myself. It's it's simple. I it's, want answers. Uh, you're gonna get answers. Fucking, we just went through a big old timeline. Was a good thing to learn. It was absolutely one hundred percent. 100% yeah um so what are we doing we went through the timeline of things you know we went in depth oh, on some more than ass. wow that's something I did not need to know Constropic thank you um and we got ourselves to the southern universe southern university shooting which we were about to read and I made a haha -ha funny You're welcome joke. smile um about this and just like i have everyone else at the end when this is all done i'd like you to go at back scarlet to underscore vt no learning them i'd like you to learn and watch the first little bit only of the kisses stream. learning and smooches the best combination Lol. all right <sighs> as it says let's figure out how long this is oh it's not even long all right okay defects Southern, Uver Southern University in Agricultural and Mechanic Mechanical College in Baton Rouge, Well, I have indigestion, Louisiana. so I'm going to go take some gel tabs and at Trinks Files. Why do you do this to me? Have fun, Con. I mean, not you're not going to have fun, but, you know. Uh, yeah. Try to listen with this in the background if you can, though. It contains information that's useful to know. 
Stewart. Is the largest historically Buffer, what am I doing? Uh Buffer, you're you're uh oh, shit. I mean <laughs> Trin. You are forcing Scarlet to learn, maybe. I don't know. Putting words in their mouth, maybe? Or just being a little troll? Or something. Fuck, I don't know. Uh largest historically black college in the state of Louisiana. At Trinks Files, Trin kisses are educational right. Well, their educational one combined with education. You know, I'm actually one of the best Hella students in my state. I could read this with a migraine and heartburn, no sweat. Well, that's good. Unfortunately, you have to deal with me reading it. Which is more akin to hearing a... Trust. Model T Ford trying to fucking start. Um... Ooh, uh -uh. Anyways, uh, in 1970, over 10,000 black students attended the university. Although the school president and most of the administration- At Scarlet underscore VT, if you are learning things, then I guess, yeah. Were black. The university itself was under control of the Louisiana State Legislature. Um, the state spent only- Already finished the paragraph. Smile. Todd, I'm gonna fucking castrate you. Um- the state spent only half as much money on the black students in their facilities as they did on the white students LOL. In predo predominantly in white colleges and universities. Okay, I'll shush now. Sorry, Buffer. No, Trin, it's okay. I'm pulling your non-existent leg. Trin, we love you. Stay. It's okay. The students of so Southern University had endured low-quality food, inadequate funding, and overcrowded and improper housing. That include worn out and At torn Trix mattresses. Three C. Uh, in such bad shape that many opted to sleep on the floor instead of the beds in their dormitories. Students also wanted more courses on African American history and culture in separate, black controlled board of trustees. By November nineteen seventy two. In an attempt to present their grievances about campus conditions to the university administration, the students formed an organization, Students United, led by Ricky Hill and Fred J. Prejean. Prejean? Prejean? Prejean. For over a month, the students boycotted classes and held demonstrations on campus. Southern University had a very large football following, and during one game, student protesters took over the field and stopped the game. Louisiana Governor Ed Edwin Edwards ordered the campus clo campus closed, citing safety reasons, and sent in members of the National Guard and op local police officers. Initially, they followed students across the campus and used intimidation tactics to stop the protests. Four students were arrested in the early hours of November 15th, and the officers left the campus. On the morning of November 16th, the student organization met with the university president, Dr. G. Leon Netterville, and asked him to go to the police and ask for the release of the arrested students. Dr. Netterville agreed and told the students that they could wait for his return in his office. Meanwhile, the other students set fire to the registrate. Huh? Meanwhile, other students set fire to the registration office and other university buildings. Although Dr. Ned Netterville left the campus, an unknown caller alerted police that the university president was being held hostage by the students in his, in his administration building. Over 300 police and National Guard officers arrived on the campus in full riot gear with a tank. With a tank? With a fucking tank? They surrounded the administration building and ordered the students to come outside. As the students began to emerge from the building, the, the officers launched tear gas canisters at them. One student threw, it, threw the canister back in their direction of the officers, and shots were fired from the tank in the surrounding, and from the surrounding officers. When the smoke cleared, two students, Leonard Brown and Denver Smith's, Smith, were dead. The coroner... Hypoth... W T H Y. Hypoth L Landry? Hypoth Landry? I'm sorry, that name. Reported that the students were victims of either buckshot or shrapnel. No officer was ever charged with the crime. I know, right? Why the fucking tank? 
Netterville resigned after the shooting. In 1975, a separate board of trustees was created to govern the university. In 2017, Southern University awarded both Brown and Smith posthumous degrees. Oh, great. Very useful. A PBS documentary, Tell Them We Are Rising, the story of what black colleges and universities. Also. I mean, probably because they're the National Guard, maybe? Moscow. I, I didn't think they have access to those, but fuck, I don't know. Was released in 2017, detailing the student movement at Southern Colleges and the violence at Southern University. A fucking tank! And the last piece defects. The Boston Bussin case. Is Trin just making out with me in chat? They hope this is happening. Well, you know what they say, defects. Mistakes happen in the heat of in the heat of passion, Jimbo. Listen, I support it. Y'all y'all can kiss and chat as also, much as you want. I have God no. damn it, add time. Wait, I am. I though it was a forehead kiss. We oh, oh. have to wait. That wasn't specified a gag, Gaga. Scarlet be kissing them lips. Sometimes I give myself the creeps. Sometimes my mind plays tricks on me. It all keeps adding up. I think I'm cracking up. When are My the defects right, going Scarlet. to be back? They'll be back here soon. Probably. probably. There we go. Hello. You're back. Cool. Let's finish the last one. <coughs> Morgan V. Harrington. Blah, 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 blah. This isn't going to be another legal document, right? Nah, eh, probably not. Better not be. Garrity, a district... Di uh, district judge. Be gay, do crimes. Be gay, do... That is... That is literally the correct motto. Oh, shit. Drink something time. Oh, time to drink some... Time to drink something. Time to... I can only drink so much! I can't... Scarlet, don't drown, buffer. It's time to drink. <laughs> it's time to. <laughs> God, I gotta refill my fucking drink. I ran out in this. <sighs> Hold on, defects. You all start reading ahead of me. I get more water. Because I hope you know, I have like certain quantities I choose as a minimum filament, which means I actually have to have those minimum quantities. Don't drown times buffer. Four. All right, I have consumed. I won't drown her. I, I'm alive. Okay, thank you for all the drinking, Scarlet. I appreciate it. I'm well hydrated now. All right. Here's to our last document of the night, and I hope all of you, thus far, have learned something that hopefully might stick with you. I really do. At least one thing. Hopefully. Alright? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright, so. Um. <clears throat> At Scarlet underscore B team wa good. <laughs> three. <clears throat> Garrity District Judge, this is a school desegregation case brought by, a bl by black parents and their children who attended po Boston Public Schools. <clears throat> Plaintiff seeks for themselves and on behalf of their class, 
uh, declar declaratory declaratory in injunctive relief. I don't know what injunctive. One of you look up what injunctive means. I don't know. At Trinks files buffer seventeen heart buffer seventeen heart buffer seventeen heart. Put the put the definition of injunctive in chat, please. I do not know what that word means. Relief against the defendants for a myriad of acts that allegedly violate the constitutional rights of the plaintiff class. Defendants are the boss. Ugh, fuck, I don't. Uh, I maintain racial state. Okay. Plaintiffs have alleged that the city defendants have intentionally brought about and maintained racial segregation in the Boston public schools by various actions, including the adoption and maintenance of pupil assigned po policies, the establishment and ma manipulation of Injunctive, attendance areas. The act or an instance of enjoining. All right, let's keep that in mind for declaratory and how would that get? Okay, so it's like junction, conjunction, the, fuck it, I don't know. All right, thank you for the info. <sighs> Trin kissed me a lot. That was injunctive. True. And we're going to make it worse. All right, so. All right. The establishment and manipulation of attendance areas in dis district lines and reflecting segregated residential patterns. Um, the establishment of grade structures and feeder patterns. The administration of school capacity. Yay, giving sc and buffer 17 scared. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, enlargement and construction policies, transportation practices, and unjustifiably failing to adopt or implement policies reasonably available to eliminate racial segregation in Boston public schools. Plaintiffs assert that these alleged practices have resulted in denying black school children the equal protection of the laws in violation of the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. C, as we learned about prior, Brown v. Board of Education. Oh, God, this is all in legal speak. Don't give me legal speak. Give me things that a normal person can fucking read. Stop it. Give me normal words. Give me things I can read. I guess we'll t fucking use this. I didn't want to end on a like, old spark notes of it. On June 21st, U.S. District Judge Arthur Garrity issues a court order that initiates the busing program to desegregate Boston public schools. Busing? That might be busing. Shit, I don't know. We did it, defects. That was a little anticlimactic, but... We got a few minutes, right? Anything else I can do? How long is this? If we have enough time, I would be so down for that. It's not even that long. Buffer, can we drown Scarlet in kisses? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that was the first Scarlet. But you know what, defects? Anyone else who hopes it's for them, I'll. You can have that. You can have that. That fantasy. That imagination. Close your eyes. At Scarlet underscore VT Wamwa. Smile. <laughs> Rosa Parks being fingerprinted by Deputy Sheriff T. H. Lackey, Montgomery, Alabama, February second, nineteen fifty six. Why am I so yawny? Okay, last one. Revered as one of the most influential people of the 20th century, Rosa Parks is best known for her role in Montgomery in the Montgomery bus boycott in 1956. Parks was born on February 4th, 1913, to Leona and James McCauley, James McCauley, in 
Tuskegee, Alabama. Leona worked as a teacher and James as a carpenter. Carpentry is cool, Defex. Carpentry is based. I like comp- carpentry. Teachers are cool too. But I don't know, there's something like inherently just cool. You do things with wood. You, you carve them. You change them. You build with them. They're cool. Anyways. Um, Parks was schooled by her mother until the age of 11 when she moved to Montgomery with an aunt and started attending the Montgomery Institutional School for Girls. She even took a job as a janitor to support her private school education. Though Parks began to attend Alabama State Teachers College High School, she dropped out to care for an ill fam- for to care for ill family members. After marrying Barber and local politician activist Raymond Parks in 1931, she became an active member of Montgomery's NAACP, where she served as a youth director and later as the secretary. She also participated in the organization's voter registration drives. Parks became an advocate of desegregation and took pride in being the member of the organization that won the Brown v. Board of Education case. On December 1st, 1955, following the end of her shift as a seamstress for the Montgomery Fair department store, Parks boarded a Cleveland Avenue City bus. As passengers boarded the bus, Parks and other African American riders were asked to give up their seats once the whites only section has been filled. Parks refused. Like other advocates of desegregation, Parks placed herself in danger by refusing to follow Montgomery's segregation laws. She was arrested and received a $14 fine. This was Parks' second encounter with the bus driver, James Blake. He had kicked Parks off the bus many years prior due to this incident. Parks called local NAACP president E.D. Nixon and informed him of her arrest. Within hours, the Women's Political Council, WPC, which was formed in 1946 to address the grievances of black bus patrons in Montgomery, sprang into action. The WPC printed flyers and brochures, phoned potential supporters, and created carpools, marketing, marking the beginning of the 381-day Montgomery bus boycott. A little more than a year. Nice. After a long protest, the U.S. Supreme Court declared that the declared that bus segregation declared bus segregation unconstitutional in 1957. Following the boycott, uh, when the Boston accent slips out, following the boycott, Parks moved to Detroit. Michigan with her husband and worked as seamstress before worked as a seamstress before taking a job as an assistant to Detroit Congressman John Con- Conyers. In 1987, she founded the Rosa and Raymond Parks Institute for Self-Development, which teaches which teaches students about civil rights movement, about the civil rights movement and encourages them to strive for success. Parks received numerous honors, including over 40 honorary de- what? Including 40 honorary degrees, the Medal of Freedom, the Congressional Gold Medal of Honor, and the two and two NAACP Image Awards. The state of Michigan honors Parks each February 4th on Rosa Parks Day. Uh, on Rosa Parks Day, Troy State University in Alabama honored Parks by constructing a museum and library that bears her name. The Henry Ford Museum in Michigan also preserved Parks' legacy by purchasing the Cleveland Avenue bus she rode on December 1st, 1955. In addition to, in addition to author, authoring several books about her story in 2002, Parks teamed up with CBS to produce a biographical film titled The Rosa Parks Story. On October 5th, 2005, Rosa Parks passed away in Detroit. She was 90... Whoa, look at her go! She was 92 years old! Later that month, she became one of only 30 Americans 
She being one of the only one of only thirty Americans and the first woman to lie in honor in the Capitol Rot Defects, can you look up what this is? This is the second time it's been mentioned. The Capitol Rotuna Rotunda. Rotunda. What is that? Someone find out that out for me. Thank you. In 2013, her statue was added to the Statuary Hall. Give me a second. Thank you, Trin. Statuary Hall in the same building. She was the first African American woman so honored. Look at that. And we're going to learn what that is in just a moment, thanks to our lovely Trin. And while that happens, I'm going to take a drink because my mouth is getting a little dry, defects. <laughs> Thank you, Scarlett. That's the so much. The United States Capitol Rotunda is the tall central rotunda of the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C. It has been described as the Capitol's symbolic and physical heart. Built between 1818 and 1824, the rotunda is located below the Capitol Dome. Scarlett, I'm gonna fucking ban you from redeeming for me. God. No, you're a mod. I can't even do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I honor my drink redeem, Scarlet. I need to refill my drink more. I don't have enough for seven. How could you? Oh, I get it. You just... You want to see me here as long as possible. I understand. I would too. Seven sips? No, Trin, I don't do sips. When I, when I have a drink redeem, it's like a quantity in my head. You said you were thirsty. I was thirsty! I'm going to drown. I never like drink redeem and just do it and that's it. I solved your issue. <sighs> All right. Drink a lot. Thank you, Scarlet. I yes, you did solve the issue. That, you're you're correct. <laughs> Thank for the uh the information, Trent. I have a follow up question. What the fuck is a rotunda? I I'm gonna level with you. I was hoping it would also tell us what a rotunda. I don't know what a rotunda is. Is that like a word people know? Is that like a it's a big round top of a building, I think. We're burying people in the round top of a building? Nice! <sighs> Alright, defects. I think... We've only got six minutes till 9.30. I think... We're gonna wrap it up. So now... Defects. This is where we bring it to you. Um. Oh. Oh. First off, again, I would really, really like to just say how much I appreciate you all being here today. Seriously, it means a lot. Like, super seriously. I, I cannot say that. I cannot stress that enough. This means a lot, and I would like to thank you very much for taking the time to stop by and learn from someone who might not be qualified in teaching. Of course. But I certainly hope it helped. Thank you. Now, Ty. before I go, before we, before we raid someone, I would like to ask... And I'll, I'll wait a minute for it. Do any of you have any questions? Don't be afraid for it to be like, oh, I don't know if I can ask that question. Uh, I'm scared of asking it. What if, what if it's something wrong? What if... The only way for us to learn and get past things defects is to ask. And if you feel very uncomfortable about it, you don't want to ask live, I'll respect that. You DM me. We'll still learn together. 
you have my Discord defects. It's it's in the chat. Scroll up if you haven't seen it. If, if you missed it, you can DM me personally. We'll look it up together, and we'll have the answer. All right. Sound good? I'll wait. I'll wait another like 20, 30 seconds just to make sure. I don't think I have any questions. All right. In the meantime, let's prepare preemptively. Who are we going to raid to? Oh, we got a lot of friends streaming right now. Oh. Oh, who are we going to? Who are we going to? <gasps> Can I recommend Snowy Mirror? Who's Snowy Mirror? I mean, sure. Buffer, thanks for stream. And I hope you're doing well after stream. Alright, Defects. Thank you so much for coming. And sure thanks, Scarlet. We'll do them. Also, Trin! She's a Snow Witch cat. You're very welcome. I will be, and am. Honestly, I'm wicked happy I got to share this all with you. Thank you. Seriously, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I love you all. And with that, I bid you all adieu. I'm not giving you a fancy stream message, raid message, but I want you all to say something. If you can, if you're not lurking, say something in their chat. Say hi, I don't care what it is. Make yourself known. All right, peace out, defects. I bid you all adieu. Bye-bye for now. And, and raiding.